we are interested in a, a special case of combined translation plus rotation rotation about an axis which moves uh, parallel to itself when a particle goes around a circular path about an axis when a particle of a body goes around a circular path all particles of course will be in circular motion and if you know the plane of circular motion and if the axis moves parallel to itself that plane would not change so each of the particles would be well moving in a plane uh, which is not changing so imagine first a fixed axis rotation a particle is going on a circular path every particle is going on a circular path in their own planes and we move the axis parallel to itself that plane does not change that is the case we are interested in now there is one interesting thing that we need to do here about uh, combination of translation and rotation if uh, say we have a, uh, a body which is rotating about an axis through O at omega and translating at V that is since this is the axis velocity due to rotation will be zero there that will be velocity only due to translation now if you want velocity of any point on this body say here this point now the velocity of this point will be well related to O it will be at right angles to this line say OP this way this will be omega bar cross OP bar right now omega bar being perpendicular to the plane omega bar cross OP bar will be having a magnitude of omega times OP and the direction will be perpendicular to OP so we know both the magnitude and direction of the cross product so this is omega times OP right let's say this is PA this is the velocity relative to O we need to add the velocity of O to get the velocity of P related to the ground observer so let's do that let's say add the velocity of uh, this is velocity V let's say this is AB AB represents the velocity V this is velocity of translation now this would be the resultant this PB would be the sum of R omega and V that is the velocity we are interested in. So to get the velocity of P, we will have to add vector PA and vector AB. Now, it will be nice if PB can be got in a simpler manner. Like for example, if this can be seen as a rotation about some other axis. This is a way of doing it. Now let's try perpendicular to PB. And well, this... Uh, two lines intersect at uh, I, the line from O perpendicular to uh, V and the line perpendicular to PB, they intersect at I. Now I is the instantaneous axis of rotation, we will show that it is possible to express velocity of P, which is the vector sum of P and PB, AB, P and AB, as due to rotation at same omega as about O and uh, well, let's see how we can do that. Now, obviously, if uh, we want to express the velocity of any point on this body as omega times the distance from that point, distance of that point from the instantaneous axis, even for O, we should be able to do that. That is, V must be equal to omega times I O. Right? V must be equal to omega times I O. Now, we have from this triangle, which we have got uh, uh, the triangle here, I O bar plus O P bar is equal to I P bar. Well, let's uh, have a cross product with omega bar here. Omega bar cross I O bar plus omega bar cross O P bar equals omega bar cross I P bar. Omega bar cross I O bar will be V, that is A B bar plus omega bar cross OP bar, that is PA bar, that is omega bar cross IP bar. Now AB bar plus PA bar, AB bar plus PA bar, mind you the order does not matter, so PA bar plus AB bar is PB bar, that is omega bar cross IP bar. That is it, velocity of any P on this body, which is in combined translation plus rotation, can be seen as uh, omega bar cross 
the distance of that point from the instantaneous axis. Now, how do we find the instantaneous axis? We will see that. Well, how, we to find, how will we find that instantaneous axis? We will find that by this one simple way here. As far as this point goes, we, I mean, we do not have a, a rotation due to rotation velocity is 0. So, the velocity of O is only V, right? And uh, we must be at right angles to the line joining the point O with the instantaneous axis, so perpendicular. So, if you draw a perpendicular, the distance will be V by omega. So, I O is uh, v, by, v, v by omega. If we know V and omega, we know I O. Simple enough. So, any point on the body, its velocity can be got by this simple means. Just get the distance from I to P and then draw a perpendicular. If you are interested in uh, direction, it will be perpendicular I P. And uh, if you locate I, join I and P, then draw a perpendicular to that. That will give us the direction. Magnitude will be omega times I P. That is, after all, omega is perpendicular to the plane. Omega bar cross I P bar will be omega I P in magnitude. So, magnitude is omega into I P, direction perpendicular to I P. So, omega about I would be same as omega about O. Do realize that. Let me sum it up. This object is in combined translation plus rotation. Rotation is about an axis through O at omega and O is translating at V. Velocity of a point P related to O is uh, OP times omega that is represented by P A perpendicular to OP. And to find the velocity P related to the ground observer, we have to add the velocity of O. This A P A is the velocity relative to O. So, A B is equal to this V. We have drawn that vector parallel to this V. And so, if you add P A and A B, we get this P B. That is the velocity of P related to the ground observer. Now, we have drawn a perpendicular to P B and that line we see intersects the line drawn perpendicular to V at I. Now, the velocity of uh, this point P can be got as I P times omega. That is what we have shown. So, instead of adding two vectors, we are getting the vector P B by directly drawing that line I P and drawing a line at right angles and the magnitude of that line is omega times I P. If uh, you know velocities of any two points of a body, then you can find the instantaneous axis. This is a, a rigid body in combined translation plus rotation. So, if you know the velocity of any two points of the body, say point A has a velocity like this and point B has a velocity like this. These velocities are at right angles to each other. Now, the if this combined translation plus rotation, we can find the instantaneous axis and that must lie on the perpendicular to this velocity, right? And perpendicular to this. They intersect here. That is the instantaneous axis. If you happen to know these velocities, we say this is L1, this is V1, and this is L2, this is V2. L1 by V1 should be equal to L2 by V2. That is, uh, sorry, V1 by L1 should be equal to V2 by L2. That is, what is that V1 by L1? Well, that is the angular velocity about this point. Let us call that I. This is the angular velocity. So, that is where the instance X is. Suppose, uh, Velocities of the, the two points, the uh, velocities are at right angles to this line and uh, say this is what it is. This is V1 and this V2. This is a common perpendicular, but what do we know? The velocity must be perpendicular to this line if it is seen as pure rotation and that point must lie somewhere here, say some L away, say this is D. And what do we know? V1 must be L omega and V2 must be L plus D into omega. If we know V1, V2 and D, we can find L and omega. So, if the velocity is the perpendicular is common, then we can find it this way. Of course, if you know both uh, V and omega of a point, say if this is a velocity V and this is rotating at omega like this, then this is the this is the axis, the axis passes through this point. Then uh, the instantaneous axis can be found by saying, well, this is where it should be, right? Because uh, V and omega, this must be 
V by omega V. This must be in a line at right angles to V. Now, this idea of uh, getting velocity of any point by seeing it as rotation about the instance x is true for even this point, right? So, the velocity of this point V should be expressible as some d times omega or that d being the distance here, which we got d as what? Well, V by omega. Sorry. Right, V by omega. So, this uh, is interesting. Also, if you happen to find a point of uh, zero velocity in the body, then uh, due to combined translation plus rotation, that would be the position of the instantaneous axis. You don't have to calculate anything. If you somehow know, well, that uh, the velocity of a particular point of the body is zero due to combined translation plus rotation, and that's where the instantaneous axis is. Like that's the case of a body rolling on a surface without slipping. When you're told that it's not slipping, the velocity of the point of contact in, with the floor must be zero. So this is where the instance x is. So if you happen to know the velocity of a particular point of the body is zero, how do we know that? You're told that it's not slipping. So if there is no slipping at the point of contact, velocity must be same as that of the surface, which is zero in this case, where the surface is at rest. So velocity of this point is zero. So that's where the instance x is. So if you want velocity of any point in this body, all you need to do is draw that line and this is it. So finding velocity of a body, a particle of a body in combined translation rotation, rotation is simple. The combined translation rotation becomes simple in terms of velocities. Also in terms of energies, if you want energy of, of this body in combined translation plus rotation, don't have to add half m v squared plus half m v squared, you can find i about this, this axis this instantaneous axis into omega squared. The omega about this axis, instance axis, same as omega about the x of rotation. For example, this body is rotating about this axis and translating. So, the velocity of this is zero and find the, this is the axis, instantaneous axis, find i about this axis. And uh, that's about it. This is a toy. And uh, well, this would make you appreciate that uh, plane motion. So if I let it go, you can see the every particle is in circular motion about the x and that plane of the circle is not changing. So we have uh, axis moving parallel to itself. 